Welcome to the Chop Team. I'm your host, Seth the Dark Child. I'm your host, Twins Inc. Our show is about two guys and any friends that happen to come over with a topic that we want to chop up. This is our barbershop style podcast. We discuss it all. If the fellas at the shop will go in on it, we will. Let's chop it up. We back. Part two. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. Seth the Dark Child, how you doing, my brother? Oh man, I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm. I just want this one of them things. I just wanted to get off off my chest before before while I was thinking about it. Hope I don't start arguments I can't defend later on. I, I highly doubt that. <laughs> I never, I never heard or seen you have an argument that you couldn't stand on your own two feet on. So. I guess we'll put that to the test today, right? Uh, if somebody, yo, I'm undefeated as long as I ain't got nobody to argue with. <laughs> you undefeated? Hey, I'm yeah. undefeated. I mean, like I said, I, I I doubt that we get any live on the spot because we're mm-hmm. doing this show on Wednesday because, once again, this weekend is Valentine's Day. You know, so we don't know what this week going to look like. So we just, you know, <laughs> here we are right now. That's all I'm going to say. We're here today. So, yeah. you know, we, we may get some smoke. We know we may not. Hey, but Seth the Dutch, I'm, I'm going to let you lead it off because uh, I believe this one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I got you on this one. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, background. There so, we go. The question, are you one dimensional? This is strictly to the ladies. Um, it is one sided. It is from a man's point of view. This is a man's channel. We see it from the men's point of view. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt and factor that into your comprehension of what you hear. Anyway, so last week we had a conversation with uh, one of our one of our subscribers. Thank thank you, Sherry. Shout out. And um, she just said. I said something that sounded a little bit chauvinistic. I'm not going to say repeat exactly what it was, I think. But she said, you make us sound one dimensional, right? As part of a larger conversation. Hearing her say one dimensional made me start thinking about exactly why would I have said something that made it seem like women were one dimensional. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, it was about relationships and all that. And so I did a little thinking. And I do think that at this point, when it comes to men, women interacting in relationships, women are one dimensional. Uh oh. I, I, for real, I could just be cynical and I'll take that. But I think, I think that relationships have boiled down male female interaction for the most part, not, a, not for everybody, there's always exceptions. That thing's 100%. Right. That men and women, men, women's relationships with men have boiled down to one dimension for the most part. Um, the, we ask this question all the time. What do you bring to the table? What do you offer in a relationship? Now, we, and I'll say this as a man, I know what I'm supposed to offer. I know the things I do to make a relationship work. But I also know that my expectations of, of my counterpart just doesn't seem to measure up. You know what I'm saying? You, and and on top of that, I hear a lot of women saying stuff. They say this, you know, you know, I'm more than just a pair of, uh, I hope I can say tits. (laughs) I'm more than just a pair of tits. I'm more than just a nice ass. You know, look at my personality, look at, look at my accomplishments. And then when you step back and ask most of these young ladies, what are, okay, so in a relationship, what do you bring to the table? For the most part, they bring sex to the table for the most part, you know, um, cooking, most Most women of my generation can cook a little bit, but let's be honest, there ain't a whole bunch of Sunday dinners being cooked by these people. Right. They're not. Anybody can boil hot dogs and make a pot of spaghetti. But when it comes to Sunday dinner, 
you you know who can cook a Sunday dinner who can't. And I, I haven't met anyone under 50. This is just me. I'm Okay, I'm exaggerating. But there, I've only met a handful of ladies under 50 that knew how to bake a pie. Not a cake, a pie. <laughs> my grandma said mother, a handful. Uh, a, a, a handful. Wow. My my grandmother can make a pie out of anything, bro. She made a fruit. She made pies out of fruit cocktail. She made pies out of pears. Who, who in that blank ever made a pear pie? I don't know. But my grandmother could. You know. So we cooking for the most part. Even in my household, I can cook just as well as my wife or ex-wife. I can cook just as well. And when we met, I actually cooked better than she did. She did put in work towards the end of the relationship to learn the skill. Uh huh. But nah, cooking it, she couldn't say she brought domestic skills to the table. Once again, cleaning, doing laundry, all these things. I was a single male living by her myself when she met me. And I took care of my house. My mom drilled that into my head. So your domestic skills, what, what you bring to the table? You bring in money to the table. You have, you have an education. You have um, your degrees. But at the same time, even with my personal experience with my ex-wife and, ex- and girlfriends and stuff like that, the truth of the matter is you think you're getting a lot from these people until you stop step back and look and outside of your birthday and Christmas or anniversary, you don't get nothing. Even on Valentine's day, when you out there buying a tennis break bracelet, she out there in the bathroom with a $1 can of shaving cream, fixing downstairs. Cause she's going to give you something you've been getting all year anyway. <laughs> it's funny. Someone, I just had a conversation with that. Talking about, <laughs> talking about, well, when Valentine's Day come, you expecting her to give you that best, whatever. I'm like, what? I said, that's something I should I be getting on a regular anyway. So how are you going to give me something that I already been getting and should be getting? So that's not, no, that's, that's no effort exactly. to it. Once again, that's, that's admission to the relationship. That's, that's the price you pay to get in a relationship. That's your cost of admission. Once you got into the relationship, what else are you, what else is here for you? Right. Right. I mean, this isn't just me thinking. I mean, this is me just running through my head that outside of, you know, it used to be you, you provide comfort and caring, but the truth of the matter is if you show, if you show emotion in front of uh, most of these women, bruh, they're going to think you weak, man. You can't, you can't drop the facade that you're a thug, even if you, you got to be, a, you got to be literally Albert Einstein mixed up half Albert Einstein, half Nino Brown. <laughs> Not Nino Brown. <laughs> with, a, with a little bit of Kevin Hart sprinkled in. No emotion. Make me laugh. Be smarter than me and be harder than me. <laughs> right. Right. But don't, don't you come up in that when, how about this? Just to be honest, think about love songs nowadays. Let's be real. Love song. These things don't sound nothing like they did when we were kids. Not at all. Not even close. <laughs> I mean, if Keith Sweat came out right now, he couldn't sell a record. <laughs> like, who's this whining dude screaming? Why he always begging and crying? And new addition, who is this little candy girl? Bobby <laughs> Brown, what's the you want a tenderoni? You going to take me to the beach he on? Because that's the only way you're going to get this love. I mean, come on, folks. So. One dimensional. It always boils at this point it literally boils down to when we ask what do you offer, it keeps coming back down to this. This is what I'm offering. And just to make anybody mad that has a comment, let me throw this out at you. Um I seen a meme that said black people keep jumping on challenges. But all the challenges I see being jumped on are over sexualized challenges. Facts. Like remember the cucumber challenge? Facts. That wasn't that wasn't proving how smart you were. You weren't using that cucumber to prove how smart you were. Uh, the silhouette challenge. You weren't trying to show me that you were you you had good acting skills on the silhouette challenge. <laughs> the twerk challenge. 
Oh, I'm just saying. The bust that don't up. look like. Wow. Don't look like. Thank you. Don't look like you were doing calculus or algebra on those particular challenges. So I haven't yet to see the baking a pie challenge. Cooking, um, how how to keep how to make a kid stop crying challenge. I ain't seen none of those. Um, and even so, and I, I'm, I'm keep on moving because I'm, I'm I'm fully of this point where when you say what do you bring to the table, I don't care what you say out your mouth. This is what I see in reality. Twenty years ago, when they first came out with cell phones and and, and social media, fifteen twenty years ago, whatever, people used to get a you you would get a picture on a selfie and people liked it, right? Right. Now, every year, women have taken off more and more and more clothing so that you half naked, barely getting likes on social media. So you stripping away all the layers that used to mean something. Now, we just want to, you just showing us your tits. And so 90% of the time, when I see a woman, I'm like, oh, she's cute. I scroll through her page and I can see with her some tights on. Or uh, uh, some workout pants or something that looks so tight that she basically naked outside of a, a couple millimeters of clothing covering up her private parts. You basically naked. And listen, and why you say that too? You know, I'm married, so I'm no longer trying to go out there and, and fish, right? But mm-hmm. as far as my son, you know, he's young, but he will be eventually be out in the dating pool, right? One time I'm gonna yep. tell him this: Hey, when you meet a girl. Make sure you get her, you know, her IG, her her TikTok, and then once mm-hmm. you get her information, go through her page, mm-hmm. and that's going to tell you what type of woman she is, right? Mm-hmm. Some of y'all are like, oh my god, he can't do no. Listen, okay, you do what you do, raise your son your way, <laughs> right? But I want my son to go to their page and look at it. If you can see everything that you want to see, because at the end of the day, as a man, you don't want a woman that everyone has. You want your you want your woman to be precious. You want her to be a prize, right? Mm-hmm. You want her to be like, yeah, this is my woman. I work, you know what I'm saying? I put the, you know, it's a prideful thing, right? You know, mm-hmm. I don't want a woman yeah. that everyone on I don't want to walk. I, I don't want to walk in the room. Everybody snickering, laughing at me because I'm messing with the jump off. You know what I'm saying? She had been yeah. ran through through the whole squad. I want boys looking like, oh, she bad. Who that? Yeah, oh. not not like, oh yeah, I know about her. That's such and such. Calling out her nickname. Yeah. So let's make it even worse. Let's make it even worse. Um, you don't want somebody who's the jump off, who been ran through, who everybody in the neighborhood has seen. Let's talk about OnlyFans. Cool. So <laughs> at the beginning, at the beginning of this pandemic, when everyone had to stay home and blah blah blah, people losing their jobs. Oh, that was horrible. I'm not knocking it. Instead of saying, "Let me get my education up, learn a new skill," they opened up over. Three to four million OnlyFans accounts. All right. So when you, the moment, the instant you thought you could capitalize on your body, three to four million of y'all did. That that says everything I need to know. In a few years, how you, how your son gonna find somebody cute or nice or something like that? Let let me say this, and I'm gonna say this. I hope anybody listen. Do y'all, do, do people, uh, do you know what facial recognition software is? Talk to them. I mean, but you, yes, you, twins, you know what that oh, is. I know right? exactly what it is. You do, I would say this to anybody out there, you do realize that search engines are incorporating facial recognition software into the search engine, right? Mm-hmm. Comp- when a so when a company does a background check, say that again. You, so let's say you open up an OnlyFans account and you and you want to uh, your 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 OnlyFans account is Red Snapper. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying that's your that's your sexy name, Red Snapper, right? Um, in a couple of years, if not already, I, I don't need your name when I do an image. If I if I take your driver's license picture or something, and or your social media posts on Facebook and I do a, fa- a image search that facial recognition it's going to pull that only fans account info right it is so now mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you think it's private right now, but give it five years, just like Tinder with that hack on Tinder, or was that Ashley Madison? You think you think your son won't be able to see if his girls had an OnlyFans account. It's going to pull everything. Nothing is ever deleted off the internet. I mean, also like you said, I mean, when you when you when you think about businesses, right? Companies, you know, you went to you went to college, you know, what I'm saying you got a good degree, and you mm-hmm. you, you want to be over the PR, right? For you know, public relations mm-hmm. and commercials and advertisement. You can't be the face of the company now because they're gonna look search up your name and see things about you. Like, oh, we can't have this person representing our company, right? Mm-hmm. Mhm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know that, and and honestly, whole, and this and this has nothing to do with like body shaming. We're not body shaming nothing. You know, no, and we're not I like body, the body like right. We're not body shaming, and we can't. And we're not saying women can't do what they want to do with their body. I get it, but understand there's re- repercussions of your actions, there's and eventually, and yeah, and eventually you'll be a mother. Listen, a prime example: Kim Kardashian is going to have to explain to her kids. Why mm-hmm. she has a, a, a famous, well-known sex video out there with Ray J, which is not her dad. That's not their mm-hmm. dad. And it's there. It's going to come out. She she, and, she she can't hide it from him. She can't. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, 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 let me stress this out because you know what's going to be available in 50 years? What's that? This, that video with Ray J. I mean, right. She's going to be telling her, her even, if, even if her kids don't say nothing about it, and I'm not saying they won't, so, what about the third generation? What about your grandkids? They're going to be like, Mama, what is this? Right. Mama, did, Mama is this you? That will be Mama. a long-lasting <laughs> legacy of your name. Because, mind you, exactly. you know, you know, once they, because who they is, they're not going to change the last name. They'll be Kim West Kardashian. You know what I'm saying? Or if she, if she did change the West when she could divorce, she'll be like, oh, I'm back to Kardashian. Because... Her name is her brand. You understand what I'm saying? Or even if the boy, the son has kids, the name's still going to follow. So even, like you said, decades from now when they look at it, they're going to look up and see Auntie or Grant, 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 <laughs> Kardashian Kim out there doing her thing. And but guess what? Ray's there too. Because but her no one's name gonna care is about her the, brand. But no you one's going to care about I'm the saying? man. Or even if the boy, the son has kids, the name's... Okay, that was weird. But um, to add to that, no one's gonna care about Ray J, right? Because he he was in the video too, right? But no one's no one's not gonna care about him. They don't. Well, it's a proven fact. They don't care about the guy. My check, my check. Yes, sir. Did they terminate the live stream? Moment? No, we still good. But they even add to that, they're not gonna care about the guy. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I was talking about how you know they'll be able to see Kim mm-hmm. right in the future, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna see. They're not gonna care about the guy Ray J, right? Who was also in the video, and this it just kind of proves a point that no one cares about the guy anyway. It's always about the lady. That's one thing I need everybody to fully understand that. So yeah, we go ahead. Yeah, I would say we're we're totally. I, I'm I'm gonna be one thousand. We're to, I'm totally over that. What men if men can do it, why can't women? Forget that equality, physical equality like that is a is a joke, and I'm not even entertaining those arguments no more. If I take off my shirt, no one cares. If you take off your shirt, every dude in a hundred yards is gonna stare. Facts. I don't care how much equality you want, that ain't changing. <laughs> and I'm I'm not gay. So if I see a topless woman, I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at them take old biddies bounce. All right? So forget equality. This is what it is. Your bodies are policed. Your bodies are watched. Your bodies are desired and they attract their attention. If you do something that attracts my attention, I'm going to look at what attracts my attention. End of the sentence. If a dude walked by with a with a piece of meat slapping his kneecap, you're not going to tell me you ain't going to watch. Just not going to happen. And if you do watch, what am I supposed to do? Man, you need to quit looking at him. No, I'm like, bro, you need to pull your pants up. You messing up my game. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah I'm, I, I would just like to say that as far as it goes yeah ladies your bodies are police your bodies are observed your bodies are being watched you've made it so 
you've made it so easy to watch your bodies that men don't have a choice but to see it. But you can't desensitize men to the point where we're not going to see it. And if I could do a simple image search on YouTube or Google or Yahoo or whatever and pull naked pictures of you or compromised or not safe for work pictures of you, then it's, it is what it is. You shouldn't have put it out there if you didn't want me to see it. You shouldn't have put it out there if you didn't want my coworkers to see it. You shouldn't have put it out there if you didn't want your pastor to see it. You got to take some personal responsibility. Accountability. For your choices. So, yeah. Once again. And I mean, and I just want to say one thing about OnlyFans. This pandemic hit, you lost jobs. Instead of increasing your skills, it was just easier to take off your clothes and get men to pay you money to see your body. Yay. Way to go. How's that working? How's that working out for you in your further, in your future job searches or your mate searches? Cause if you don't tell me you got an only fans account in the future and I find out the hard way, our relationship ends that day. My son's relationship, bro, you better run a background check on every girl you meet because if she got an OnlyFans account, she can't come to this house. I don't care if she's beautiful because she is a sex worker. That's what they call OnlyFans people, sex workers. That's what they call it. And also, I ain't making this up. <laughs> right. And also, they even add to it as well, too. And mm-hmm. as far as like the OnlyFans accounts, right, we're not talking to the ladies who are already in that industry, meaning that... <laughs> If you were already a exotic dancer and because of COVID closed down, you weren't able to go to the Magic City or whatever strokers clubs to make your money again. So you say, you mm-hmm. know what? Since I can't go and make my money and, you know, let me go and create only fun account because I'm already doing already and I'm getting paid for it. So why not just do all this? Because this, this is my profession. Those women, I not say I give them a pass, but I understand and cool, whatever. I'm talking mm-hmm. to the females who were, who were not exotic dancers and decide because they lost a job, well, instead of me learning a new skill or, or do something different, I'm going to take my clothes off. And I, I'm not going to make money there because I know people who made money. So I, I got mm-hmm. a nice body. Let me do it too. And you did it. I'm t- we're talking yeah. to you. That's what we're talking We're talking to you. And I hope you made a whole bunch of money. I hope you made fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in a month. Please, God bless you. But at 20 years old, 30, 25 years old, do you know how fast you could blow through $50,000? I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, listen, that, if that they might well be popcorn. listen, if they're, if they, if they're doing only fans account, you think they know about savings and credit and stocks and bonds? You think they even know about mm-hmm. any of that information? So, mm-hmm. and on top of that, you know, and not understanding it, it's called lack of education, but you throw millions of dollars at somebody who's uneducated, they think, oh, if I get if I get a million dollars today, shit, I can get a million dollars tomorrow. And you, and when you get it, you just blow it because you know you can get it right back again. Exactly. That's, that's an NBA player, some yeah. young twenty something making millions. Exactly. So you know, so men, you're accountable too, though. But the scenario does play mm-hmm. the same. If I can go on only, not me, but if, if a woman, if she goes on only fan count and make and make make eighty thousand dollars in six months, you know, mm-hmm. it does sound kind of enticing. I, I'm not mad at her, but understand this. For you to make money on all your fans' account, you need to have subscribers. Not 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 a subscriber is subscribers. That means with an yep. S. That means there's yep. multiple people who just go on all your fans account and be searching and, and looking for profiles to subscribe to. Mm-hmm. So you know. So eventually, because mind you, um I could be right. I could, I could be wrong here. I believe this, there might be an option for you to de- to uh deactivate your account. I'm sure there so, is, right? But so. but some people are not the educated know. They think, oh, I, I forgot about it. No one's gonna go and find out. Those videos, those videos are still there. Yeah. So if later yeah. on, if, if you if you forget to deactivate your account, and then your son who's now 16 hit puberty, and now he's into girls and X Y Z, and he go online when you sleep because he got a little bit of money, he don't come on accounts like, hold up, just mom, yeah. <laughs> and he traumatized for life. Yeah. Well, like I said, just what you said, like I just said earlier, that Ashley Madison hack, remember when they got 
a hundred million people subscriber information and just dumped it onto the web. Oh yeah, that's right. Once again, mm-hmm. only fan, only fans. These accounts and websites they sit on computer servers. Um, outside of security, which is antivirus and all that, anti-hacking software, which once again, hackers are getting better every day. If you just because you deactivate the account, as long as that server's plugged in, yo, it just takes one person to penetrate that database, that, copy it all, and post it to the internet. And if it hits Google, or if it hits Yahoo, or if it hits Edge or Explore, I don't care. All the services that it could hit, uh, image search. If I put your picture in, I don't care if you put your name as as Kunta Kente or Harriet Tubman or <laughs> or or Leroy Walker. I don't care what your name is. If I do an image search with your face as a base, it will swipe. It's possibility to swipe everything you've ever posted everywhere, and this is possible today. It's def- It's just going to get better and better and better over time. Five years from now, y'all, my personal opinion, I could be wrong. Everybody with the OnlyFans account right now that's just an average person who doesn't consider themselves a sex worker is going to be very, very, very hurt in less than five years. Mm. You know, that, that's my opinion. I could be wrong. But in five years, you're going to see some major repercussions from not to mention me. Why would you date a woman who had an OnlyFans account? You sac- why- you're sacrificing your p- ability to have a decent relationship in the future because who wants to date a sex worker? Some people do. Yeah, it happens. Most people, right. most mm-hmm. people don't. Right, <laughs> right, like, right. And I was, you know, the ladies will take, stop taking the one situation when somebody does marry one. It doesn't apply mm-hmm. to everyone. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, mo- yeah. Some of them Muslims get married. Yes, that does happen, but it's not every single one of them. If you nope. if you look up your famous, because we all have our our famous porn star when we was growing up. You look them up now. <laughs> some may be married. Some may be dead. Some may be on drugs. Some may be yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's psychological but, trauma. There, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and three million new sex workers since last March. Three million? Come on, folks. That's a lot of these pretty ladies out here who will who will probably end up wanting to date somebody and be somebody's wife. Come on, man. Anyway. <laughs> like I said, I just once again, so the question come up, are you one dimensional? If you think about what is being made available to people as a as a man right now. Looking at women, think about the clothes that I see women wear. Think about the images I see on social media. Think about the the conversations you have with ladies. And I mean, once again, a lot of masculine energy running around out there. Uh, argumentative, combative. Um, a lot of them just as hard as we are. And they just as straight up for it. Look, hey, you want to smash? Yeah, let's smash. They just as straight up as a dude. There, it. Is, I'm personally of the opinion that yes, yes, ladies, in 2021, a good, good swath, chunk, percentage, whatever word makes you feel better, of y'all are, have become one dimensional. You are simply sex objects, and that's not up to me as a man or any man to fix that. You did it to yourself. This is choices. So, once again, Sherry brought it up. I just Sherry brought it up, and I answered it. I thought about it, and I I, I reaffirmed my decision. The answer <laughs> is, yeah, you are. Might be chauvinistic, but you are. All right, but <laughs> hey, I'm not mad yeah. at you, sir. It is what it is. So. I mean, anything else you want to add to the topic of this, uh, the one dimensional topic to the ladies? Um, you know what? If someone leaves a comment, we can revisit it. But this yeah. is, this is, this is me, Seth the Dark Child. Um, this is my affirmation. Yes. I do not know. I, I'm not putting this on twins. 
this is my opinion. And if you don't like it, prove me wrong. Hey, but at the same time, you know, I'm not gonna let my brother drown. So I'll be there. I, I'll be there with you with the uh, with the whippings, though. So if they come. I'm I'm here. I'm here for you. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. <laughs> I said I'm, I'm not even mad, angry, or bitter. None of this. The question was asked. The asked. This is the answer. If you don't like it, I am open to change in my position. But it ain't up to me to prove myself wrong. <laughs> That's not what I'm doing. Prove me wrong. But I appreciate the backup, brother. Hey, you know, you know, we, you know, bad boys for life. <laughs> we die together. <laughs> hey, you want to sing the song badly together? <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. Just gone. I, I got your back. You know, I ride for my homie. Hey, bro, I appreciate you. Like I say, um, any any comments? Once again, prove me wrong. Show me where I'm wrong. I'm. I would love to be wrong. Don't worry. When I when I post this episode, I'm gonna make sure I text <laughs> Sharon it. <in. laughs> I would. I know she's gonna be in. She, yeah. Don't worry. When I post this, it's going. She'll be in communications. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going on. But listen, here, ladies and gentlemen, listen. Um, like I said, you know, this kind of out of nowhere for most for some of the listeners. We usually do the show on Sunday, but this Sunday is Valentine's Day, and you know. Some of us might be simping up, right? <laughs> Most of us, I don't know, but we don't know if Sunday gonna be open for all, for everybody who's supposed to be on the show, right? So we're getting these episodes out today, but normally Sundays, three p.m. ish to maybe six or five o'clock, depending how good the conversation is. That's when we do the live recordings, and then we drop the episodes on Monday morning at seven a.m. So every Monday, there's a new episode that's gonna be dropped. It may not be this one you're hearing right now because I have other shows already in queue. So we ranking them out. They're coming out every Monday. If 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 it shows that we need to get more episodes out on maybe Mondays and Thursdays, maybe we may do that. But right now, we'll stick it with Monday, seven a.m. to get your mm-hmm. daily fix. But as we grow, trust me, we'll have them come out sooner. But we know we're still in the growing process. So if you do have any comments, please leave them in the episode. But also, if you do want to get to us directly, email us at the chop team at gmail dot com. If you want to be on the show, also email us or sign our DMs, <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> IG, the Chop Team. We're here. So thank you for tuning in. Seth the Dark Child, any closing remarks you want to leave for the people? Um, no, I hope you have a great day. Ha- happy and safe Valentine's Day for y'all who celebrate it. And I'm good. Right. And you know what? Because this episode will probably come out after Valentine's Day, so I want to hear... How did your day go? <laughs> so when you hear this, it's going to be after Valentine's Day. So we want to know, how did your day go? All ladies. If you were single, oh. married, whatever, we want to know, how did it go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you're celebrating Valentine's Day, let us know that too. You know what? All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in the show. We out. <laughs>